Guys, big changes is coming in the credit repair industry in the next few weeks. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the three biggest changes that's going to shake the credit repair industry and it might affect your credit reports in the next few weeks. Guys, stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, I'm Credit Coach Q, and I created the first cloud-based software that allows you to put your credit repair expenses to your own hands. Guys, if you're new to the channel, I'm super, super excited because I have a banger. And today, we're going to talk about the three biggest changes that's going to come to the credit repair industry in the next coming weeks. But before we get into the video, guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. It allows us to reach a wider audience and allows YouTube to push this content within their algorithm and allows us to leave these lights on, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you have anything derogatory in your credit report i mean anything negative charge-offs late payments bankruptcies medical bills guys you name it please go over to mycreditapproved.com it's the website and the software that i was telling the, telling you about that, that allows you to put the full experience to your own hands guys people are removing thousands of dollars worth of debt by themselves they are no longer using credit repair companies that are putting this information in this experience into their own hands and appreciating oh no deeper level guys please go to mycreditapproved.com check out the software and start removing these items guys if you have anything derogatory on your credit report let's dive straight into the meat and potatoes of this video now we're going to go over a lot of gems when it comes to what to look out for and what to expect when it comes to these big changes and how they might pertain to protect to affect you now let's dive straight in now the first biggest change that I'm noticing when it comes to the industry is is the way they are handling disputes. Now, the Fair Credit Reporting Act did a big investigation in February on the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian on how they are disputing or handling the disputes from the consumers, right? So basically what they did was is measure all of the disputes that they were getting in and how many disputes were handled correctly or handled at all. And the studies came back that only 2% of the clients accounts were being handled correctly so that was do-it-yourself programs that was credit repair companies they were not handling or responding to credit repair companies now as you might know the credit repair industry in terms of companies and businesses have grew tremendously over the last couple of years so that put a, a more of an influx on the volume that the credit repair companies have to go through so with that being said the CP the, the CFPB have done an investigation and determined that they they have not been responding to any of the credit bureaus. So what happened from that? That happened in February and ever since then, the credit bureaus have not been handling any type of template. So if you are using any type of credit repair company, I advise you to stop immediately. The credit repair companies that I know and within the industry are going through the same exact thing. And basically what they're doing is now, instead of not responding, they're sending out letters to the consumers to tell them that they are using templates to basically dispute the item so it's basically a stall letter and if you are a credit repair company or if you are if you hire the credit repair company know that they are dealing with this issue they are dealing with issues that they are not able to really get a immediate response or immediate delivery on your dispute letter so for instance once you come into the credit repair company they're going to send out the dispute letter they're going to evaluate the report and they're going to send out the dispute letters but the credit bureaus is going to evaluate the dispute letter and 98 percent of the time that dispute letter is coming from a template now if you are going to a reputable credit repair company most likely they are using templates because they cannot handle a large volume with organic dispute letter writing. So if you are going to a reputable popular credit repair company, just rest assured that they have some type of template inside of their back office that they are using. Now, the problem with that is that the template that they are using is not getting responded to. They're going to send you a letter and tell you that a third party is representing you in terms of credit repair and you, we want to make 
make sure that it is from you. All of the complaints from the CFPB or the credit bureau are both responding just like that. So the best course of action for this guys is to do it yourself. Like I said, I created the first do it yourself cloud-based software and you can use that software to generate your own organic dispute letters for your own custom formatted cases. And that's the only way to go around this new, um, this new hurdle that the credit bureaus are throwing at the credit repair industry. And basically is to put the, your big britches on and basically take yourself uh, in your situation in, uh, in its own hands and handle it yourself. Guys, majority of the credit repair industry are using software similar to mine, and but they are using it for clients. Guys, put it in your own hands, do everything yourself and actually get the results that you actually de uh, deserve. I'm not saying that the credit repair industry or the, the companies are bad or scams or anything like that. They just not, they just in a pickle because the credit bureaus are not basically responding to those type of companies anymore. They want to hear it from your voice. So our software has a format where you can also add your own voice, build your own character within the letters and also send it off certified mail or notarized. And that way everything from that letter is coming from the original source and you don't have to have this hurdle in front of you going forward. Now that's just pertaining to disputes. Now another interesting change that's coming to the credit um, industry in the next few weeks, actually starting in July, um, July 1st, one of the clauses uh, will be um, put in place on July 1st, 2022. So after you watch this video, that clause will already be put in place, but it is pertaining to medical debt. Um, I think this is very interesting because starting on July 1st, any medical that is less than six months old going forward will not be on the credit report. Now they are extending that window to a year. So basically, for example, they, um, if you went to the hospital, if you did not uh, pay the medical debt back in six months, they will put it on your credit report. That window has been extended to 12 months. So instead of you having a six month window to pay the, the medical bill off before it goes on your credit report, they are giving you a 12 month window where you don't, where you have a full year to accumulate the funds or come up with a payment plan to handle the debt um, before it get placed on your credit report. Now, starting next year in 2023, they are going to also do a another incentive when it comes to medical debt. Any medical debt that is going to be under $599 or less is going to be automatically removed from your credit report. So that is essentially billions of dollars worth of medical debt that's going to be removed from um, consumers credit reports overnight. Um, and that's going to be, I believe, in July of 2023. And that is going to basically put anybody that has those little small co-pays that they placed on the credit reports to be removed. Also, starting on July 1st, I believe that the medical debt also cannot so yeah the medical debt would no longer appear on the credit report if it has less than um $599 of debt anything over that after a year automatically will be placed on the credit report and I think that is interesting now um another thing that is going to be changing in the next few weeks here is they are going the credit bureaus are going to start accepting buy now pay later accounts on your credit report they are start they're going to start reporting that as active credit and what the credit bureaus uh, have noticed and this is really FICO remember I told you about FICO in the beginning of the video FICO is basically a algorithm that you that basically monitor and accumulate your credit score um, it's two algorithms FICO and Vantage and Vantage is the credit karma the credit sesame those institutions use Vantage but anytime you're going to a lender a car lender a home lender they're going to use FICO and FICO 10 is the newest version of the FICO algorithm. So you want to make sure that you um, know what FICO is and know what your FICO is prior to applying to anything. But the FICO 10 algorithm is going to be switching up how they're going to report new types of credit. And the new types of credit that I'm referring to is the buy now, pay later accounts. Now, for instance, um, you probably heard of these type of accounts with Shein, Target, um, Amazon, um, eBay. A lot of those types of websites um, and vendors 
have a buy now where you can get the product right now, get it shipped to you uh, directly and be on a payment plan essentially for those type of accounts. And basically what FICO is, uh, has done is said that over 85% of the American population have some type of account dealing with a buy now, pay later. And those accounts are not being accurately reported. So that basically puts your credit report in a position where it's not properly assessing your current credit status. So they're going to be adding these type of accounts and a lot of people are going to get is going to be in trouble because a lot of people owe these types of accounts and they never pay them off and they just go to the next one and do it again and it really never affects your credit so to speak because it's not going directly on the credit report and FICO is changing that so if you do have any buy now pay later accounts you probably want to fix the relationship that you have with them right now or if you're thinking about getting any of those type of accounts you want to keep all of these things considered guys let me know how you feel about any of these changes going forward do you think that these changes are going to be beneficial for the credit industry or do you think that they're going to be non-beneficial do you think that they're going to help you or not help you i'm very interested in your comments if you have any type of negative items that's on the credit report guys like i said go over to mycreditapproved.com use the software and put everything in your own hands guys this is the industry is changing credit repair companies is not going to be here very long and the only option that you're going to have in your family going to have to change your credit history and and and, and, and create generational wealth is to do it yourself um go over to mycreditapproved.com and let us know in the comments if we can help you set up a demo or give you guys a walkthrough in any way form and fashion guys until next time take care of your credit and take care of yourself credit coach q out